Hi everyone and welcome. In this video what I'm going to do is calculate some energy values here. So here's the example where um, this is a picture that looks like me but is not me. I actually have a very similar jacket. Um, excuse me. And this is on Okimo Mountain. So the question is how much energy does somebody have standing on Okimo Mountain versus the energy at the bottom of the mountain? <clears throat> So these are actual values. So what I did is I actually used a phone app called uh, RunKeeper. And um, while I was on the mountain, I put it in my pocket while I was skiing because RunKeeper can measure two features of energy. One is associated with height of potential energy. Um, so it actually gives you an elevation rate, uh, reading. And then the other thing that I can measure is your velocity. Um, of course, the velocity is measured in miles per hour, so I converted that into meters per second. But let's check it out. We'll see where we have more energy, right? So I kind of estimated my mass here at 60 kilograms, and according to my um, RunKeeper app, the elevation right at the peak, or at least close to the peak, of course, you know, maybe this can be a little off, um, was about 10, um, 1,019 meters tall. So let's go ahead and look at that in an energy perspective. So let's draw a picture here. So this is Okimo Mountain. All right. There it is. And let's say right at the top of that mountain is the skier, the happy skier. There it is at 60 kilograms. Now we said at the top of the mountain we had about 1,019 meters tall like this. So the first question is, you know, what is the gravitational potential energy? So this is the energy associated with height. So to calculate my GPE, it's going to be 60 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity of 9.81 times, sorry, 1019 meters for the height. So let's go ahead and do that out. So 60 times 9.81 times 1019. So this gives me a pretty large value, 599783.4. And the units is in joules. And surprisingly, this is just standing on the mountain. This is no motion. This is at rest. So as you might imagine, since we have a large height right here, we're going to have a large gravitational potential energy. So part B of the question is um, actually, it's kind of a different question, is where are we? So what is the height? at an energy of 10,000 joules, right? So if you notice, about 600 joules is way up here. So my estimate is that my energy is going to be probably way down toward the base of the mountain, maybe toward, um, toward this location right here. But what we can do is set up our gravitational potential energy very similar to what we just did uh, with the energy value that I have here and then solve for height so we could figure out where um, I would have to stand to be at that level. So let's go ahead and do that. So my uh, GPE in this case goes MGH. But in this case, I'm going to use 10,000 here. The same mass because it's the same skier. Like that. Times H. So where is this is the question. So we're going to go ahead and calculate that out. 10,000 divided by 60 divided by 9.81 gives me a large height, hence the sarcasm, <laughs> of, oops, there we go, 16.99 you know, meters, so 17 meters. <laughs> so for me to have an energy of 10,000 joules, it's like way down here with the height of 17 meters roughly like that. So that's how you can use potential energy to kind of see um, you know one of two things how much energy you have and you know where you are given that energy. Now this is an interesting energy because this tells us how much energy we have the potential to use. So if I were to take away this mountain all of a sudden and I can transfer that into a kinetic energy for example it will leave me with a lot actually and that's kind of part two over here. So let's come back to this slide. 
Um, I kept it okay. I use 60 instead of 70. It's the same kind of idea. But let's go to this question right here. Um, so it turns out that I actually recorded my value of the um, the speed at the bottom, and it turned out to be about 30 miles per hour to my disappointment. Uh, I was hoping I was going about 60, but I was only going about 30. So when I converted this into um, you know meters per second, it got about 9.34. So this is an actual value right here. So let's see. This is at the base of the mountain. So how much energy do I have at the base of this mountain, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Same kind of question. So here's our same Okimo mountain. And right at the bottom, I have a speed of 9.4, I'm sorry, 9.34 meters per second. Same mass. So this is going to be a form of kinetic energy because we're moving here. So. The setup is 1 half times 60 times 9.34 meters per second. We're going to square this whole thing. So let's do that. 9.34 squared times 60 times 0.5. So at the base of the mountain, I have 2,617 joules which is weird, right? Because I would think, I thought I would have more energy moving at the end of the mountain than I did at the top, which was about 600,000 joules just by standing on the mountain. Isn't that crazy? So at the top, I had actually more energy regarding potential energy than I did at the bottom. Now, the interesting thing about this, too, is what happens if you know anything about skiing is you don't actually go straight down. In fact, what you do is called slalom, which means you actually use friction to control your speed. Um, otherwise, you would go way, 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 way too fast. In fact, let's pretend that we did go straight down. Let's pretend that all the 600,000 joules of energy goes into motion. So how fast would I go at the bottom if that is true, right? So how fast with no, you know, I'll say friction here with no, you know, going back and forth, but really it's friction that's controlling. So let's see. So let's say all the energy goes into motion. So if I solve this out, so I'm going to do 2 times 600,000. Now notice that I'm just using 600,000 instead of 599 just as a rounding factor here. Um, so I'm going to do that times 2 divided by 60 and then I have to square root that number. So my final velocity at this point, it's, um, well this is in uh, meters per second so it's 141, um, sorry my pen is being a little slow here. 141, this is in uh, meters per second, 141, that's half the speed of sound. So just to give you an idea, this is about 316 miles per hour. So if I didn't um, go back and forth down the ski mountain, if I just went straight down, I would go 300 miles per hour, so that would be kind of kind of scary, I would say, at the very least. Um, but also, more importantly, is this is how you can use energy to evaluate your systems. You can ask questions such that, if I had all this energy and it transferred into another form, how does it relate to velocity in this case, or how does it relate to height? In fact, the next, if you watch the next couple of videos on energy conservation, I'll show you how we can use these concepts more fully to answer some more basic questions. All right, that concludes.